Abbiamo l'onore di avere Alan Shapiro con noi oggi eh, che ci eh, parlerà della città del futuro eh, in, una, in una conferenza ibrida ancora una volta con un po' di italiano e un po' di inglese, Alan parla molte lingue e, e sarà anche, anche questa parte interessante. Piccola nota biografica, anche se Alan Shapiro è molto conosciuto, ma è giusto che eh, eh, ricordiamo eh, la sua biografia. Eh, Alan è un pensatore interdisciplinare che ha studiato scienza, tecnologia all'MIT e filosofia, storia e letteratura alla Cornell University. È autore di Star Trek, Technologies of Dis Disappearing, un lavoro di primo piano negli studi di fantascienza e sulla concezione della futuristica, della futuristica tecnoscienza. Ovviamente adesso lo leggerò anche in inglese. Alan Shapiro is an interdisciplinary thinker who studies science, technology at MIT and philosophy, history, literature at the Cornell University. He is the author of Star Trek Technologies of Disappearance and leading a work in science fiction studies on the conception of futuristic te techno science. Uh, il tempo vola, quindi la parola ad Alan. Grazie. Questa luce mi disturba, non si può fare qualcosa con questa luce. È il corretore. È il Uh, yeah, come mi sono chiesto come posso giustificare questo desiderio mio di fare un discorso ibrido in due lingue. Uh, ho studiato la filosofia, però ritengo che la filosofia occidentale sia già finita e chiusa e obsoleta. E il primo filosofo occidentale, Platone, si interessava per la questione del rapporto fra la scrittura e la, e la parola e ha privilegiato la parola come modo superiore di uh, arrivare alla verità, sia politica che scientifica. E l'ultimo filosofo, filosofo della tradizione occidentale, che è stato Derrida, ha anche detto molte cose su questa questione del rapporto fra la scrittura, lo scrivere e la parola. Allora io parlerò dei situazionisti, i situazionisti, va bene così con il microfono, i situazionisti erano un gruppo di artisti, attivisti, rivoluzionari uh, che hanno influenzato molto il 68, uh, soprattutto a Parigi, e anche meno conosciuto è a San Francisco e Berkeley, negli Stati Uniti c'è anche stato un, un capitolo dei situazionisti. I situazionisti erano influenzati molto dai surrealisti, uh, però credevano che l'arte sia il luogo ufficiale del capitalismo designato dove è permesso di essere creativo. E quindi hanno fatto una critica dell'arte. E secondo me è importante per, uh, se vogliamo, uh, how do you say, bring together, uh, portare insieme l'arte e la città del futuro, do, uh, dovremmo riferirci molto ai situ situazionisti, perché 
Secondo Marx, la maggior parte della popolazione nel capitalismo non ha il diritto di essere creativo, di riconoscersi nella sua propria attività quotidiana ed è costretta a vendere il suo tempo contro i soldi per sopravvivere. Però il capitalismo ha anche designato questa zona speciale, eccezionale, dove è permesso di essere creativo e quindi abbiamo l'arte e gli artisti. E io non uh, nego l'arte, però penso più in una direzione che, si, che io chiamo l'illusione al di là del, dell'arte. E l'arte, secondo i situazionisti, uh, dovrebbe lasciare il suo ghetto Uh, privato e costretto delle gallerie, dei musei, dei concerti, del teatro e intervenire in una, una maniera o un'altra nella vita quotidiana, nella città, uh, un proget progetto del genere sarebbe creare dei uh, de situazioni Situazioni, is, it, is, that, is that masculine or feminine? Le situazioni, le situazioni uh, dove uh, gente da diversi settori della società abbiano la possibilità di conoscersi e di essere contemporaneamente allo stesso luogo e, e uh, trovare dei linguaggi comuni. Uh, in questa società ci sono uh, un, un esempio prototipico, sarebbe eh, gente senza casa e bancari uh, che non, non, non c'è mai un'occasione o, o studenti e bancari, non lo so, non ci sono uh, la, la città era o potrebbe essere forse nel futuro ancora un luogo dove ci sono incontri, incontri, uh, I, would say, I would say, we have to think choreografati, yeah? It, it, it's, about, it's about choreography and I want to talk about, uh, I, my presentation has Four parts. So I want. Oh, se, yeah, yeah. Okay. Quando ho letto il mio testo, perché ho scritto un saggio uh, sui situazionisti, ho sempre paura che nessuno capisca uh, quello che scrivo in inglese, perché è molto, molto. Uh, writerly, yeah, quello che scrivo. Allora leggo in inglese uh, pezzi di, del mio saggio e cerco di continuare a parlare in italiano. Questa è la mia ipotesi della risoluzione del problema di Platone e che uh, mi distacco della parola in quanto parlo un, in una lingua straniera, però voglio sottolineare uh, the, the writerliness of my writing. Come si tradu traduce questa frase? Hm? The writerliness of my writing che non, uh, non, non, uh, non, non si... Eh, intraducibile, che non si, si lascia tradurre in una cosa. Uh, hmm? sì. yeah. yeah. so, um, so my presentation is divided in four parts. I will talk about the situationists of the 50s and 60s, and then I will talk about 
a new field of knowledge called social choreography. And this field of knowledge, social choreography, was invented about seven years ago. And it was a group, so I'm, I'm reporting on a personal experience that I had in Limerick, Ireland uh, from a period from 2005 to 2009 that there was a theater group called the Dagda Dance Company which was influenced very much by William Forsyth in Frankfurt, if you know his choreography, uh, which is about the flexibility of the body, I think. It's been called postmodernist, but it is extreme flexibility of the body of Forsyth. And the idea of social choreography is kind of a spilling over uh, to the flexibility of the social body. And in the city of Limerick, they created events and they saw themselves as connected with the situationists from, from the 60s. Uh, and they made events bringing together people from the, from the city of Limerick. Uh, in the third part, I'll talk, or maybe it's the fourth part, there's a professor of architecture and ur urbanistic uh, named Therese Tierney who in, 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 uh, at the University of Illinois. And she wrote a lot about the smart city and information everywhere, new technologies integrated into the city. So I want to, I think her ideas are very interesting. So I want to talk about that. Is it okay? Va bene con l'inglese? Si? Okay. Um, so. Okay, and now my friend Steve Falk who was the director of this dance company in Limerick, Ireland. Now he's cr created the Institute for Social Choreography in Frankfurt. And social choreography is also very connected to the idea of cybernetic epistemology. Now, my wor if anyone has read you know, other things that I've wrote, my work is very much about inventing a new computer science, which is going to be transdisciplinary and which moves away from computer science as an engineering discipline where the programmer only has the goal of making the, the program work and instead will receive an interdisciplinary education in art, philosophy, sociology, linguistics, music. Uh, and so software is, is going to be something that's back in the field of humanities and art and, not, and, and away from the engineering and techie emphasis that computer science has had since the 60s. So in a way, the history of cybernetics is very important uh, because in the 50, in the late 40s and the 50s, cybernetics was a kind of computer science that was interdisciplinary, was connected with the humanities. Gregory Bateson, I think, was the most important. Then we have uh, Varela and Maturana, 
wrote this book, The Embodied Mind, which is an important book in the history of cybernetics. So we need to understand the epistemology, uh, get going beyond digital, the digital binary paradigm of computing, because uh, for me, Foucault is very important, and I think we have not yet looked at science and technology enough with the method of Foucault, which is to see computer science as a cultural historical construct. And we uh, assume, I would say 99% of people in universities make the assumption that the digital binary computer is the only possibility of computing. And we write a lot about Alan Turing and John von Neumann, who invented this, but we have not yet started to see that this was a historical cultural construct in the way that Foucault meant, that it has a certain episteme, and this episteme is from the 17th century, and it's the logic of mechanistic. The mechan that's uh, programming languages like uh, C++ and Java. They are based on mechanistic principles about uh, relations between part the parts and the whole, like a car engine. And what we need instead is a computer science with a different episteme, which comes partly from quantum physics, which was contemporaneous with, with Turing and von Neumann. And we have to see why did Turing and von Neumann suppress the insights of quantum physics, of Einstein and Niels Bohr and Heisenberg. Uh, it also comes from biology, where we need to see the software on the metaphor of life or living organism and ask, how does life function as an information system, and then make software based on that metaphor. Uh, anyway, back to my topic. So, the situationists are most well known from the book uh, La Société du Spectacle from Guy Debord. And this was a famous idea in media theory of La Societa, Societa de lo Spectaculo. Um, and I don't agree with that idea. And I think that the academic study of the situationists is, is wrong, basically. The many books written by academics about the situationists which focus, focus on this idea of the spectacle and I think there are other ideas of situation of the situationists which are much more interesting. And these specifically two ideas. One is called uh, in French le dérive, and the other is le détournement. So the le, le dérive means drifting, drifting through the city according to spontaneous desire. So people went for walks, they went as a group for walks in the city, and this, they, they didn't have any specific goals, any functional, rational purpose of where they want to go. So it's, in a way, it's the opposite of tourism. 
because a tourist has a book in their hand and they want to see the main attractions of a city. So in the idea of wandering or drifting, you have no specific goal and it rearranges the, the configuration and the architecture of the city because you're not interacting with places and buildings and businesses according to the functional purpose for which they exist. You're discovering new spontaneous and unconscious connections with, within the city. So I would suggest this would be a, a first way to change our relation to the city, is this situationist practice of drifting. <coughs> The second idea was the diversion of technologies. That we have to not look at a technology for the, for the function that it was given, that it was designed for, but find other ways of using the technology. Okay, I'll read now some. We have to change the world, that's what we think. Change society, change life. Do it for freedom. Get us out of this prison. We know one thing, this change is possible. All that remains is to figure out how to do it. With these words written in 1957, Guy Debord founded the Situationist International a radical group of creators searching for new forms of action in art and politics. The practice of social choreography, recently initiated by Steve Falk, carries the promise of changing the world once again to the threshold of crossing from dream to reality. In the project Gold Coast, Steve Falk worked with artist activists from Frankfurt's Tat Theater to organize wanderings of groups of individuals for several hours through the Bockenheim section of the city of Frankfurt. The idea for these walking adventures was adapted from the situationist notion of le dérive, or collectively drifting through urban spaces. In the series of conferences, conference event happenings, frame makers, choreography as an aesthetic of change, Steve Falk collaborated with the Limerick, Ireland based Dagda Dance Company to radicalize William Forsyth's postmodern choreography of the plasticity of the body. <clears throat> The pre predominant body movement paradigm in our society relegates to the status of autistic or non-functional behavior uh, mo body movements which attain legitimacy on the stage in the suppleness that foresights inspirational remaking of the dancer's body allows her to express. The ambition of social choreography is to extend this paradigm shift from the dancer's body to a new radical flexibility of the social body. Falk brought together dancers, cultural theorists, and new media artists to discuss and enact the potentialities of choreography as a socially active force. Well, okay, I like to gamble in casinos and play roulette. So I wrote something where I take the idea of the spectacle and I developed it further into a concept called the wandering spectacle. Uh, if I wager on red or black in roulette, so this, this is about thinking in a, in a quantum way, in a quantum physics way 
about the digital or the binary, a- adding the, the quantum bit state as the third possible. That's, that's the revolution from digital to quantum computing is, is instead of the bit having only the possibility of the zero or the one, that it will have a third possible state, which is the quantum bit, and which is decided by the holistic state of the software system as a whole in the present moment in real time. And this is the goal of quantum computing, but but we don't know how to implement it because the problem of quantum physics is you can't measure a quantum value. If you you try to measure or look at a quantum value, you destroy it or you alter it in the act of measuring it. Uh, So the program, you know, programming is about setting the value of a bit to a zero or a one. And all the programming languages just build on top of that basic operation. But we can't get a quantum value from a database or a bit. So that's what has to be solved. And so in my metaphor of playing roulette is a kind of uh, poetry of of how that can be solved. If I wager on red or black in roulette, pair or ampere, monk or pass, I have a nearly even chance of victory or defeat, of gaining an amount equal to my stake, or of sacrificing the money that I have set down, leaving aside the house advantage that the 37th number, the zero, affords to the gaming establishment. The only non-positive number on the wheel of chance is neither red nor black, neither pair nor ampere, monk nor pass. When this lowest degree comes up, my squandered chips are positioned by an employee onto a narrow line between further acquisition and forfeiture, and the issue is deferred. But the two essential outcomes being up or down, getting ahead or falling back, kicking ass or getting kicked, winning a bundle or crapping out, steamrolling or biting the dust, would clearly seem to be two separate and distinct modalities, entirely unrelated stations of existence, into one of which I discreetly cross over following the croupier's throw and my subsequent instantaneous visual recognition of which compartment the ball has come to rest in. (coughs) This is the basic problem of quantum physics uh, as as, uh, shown, for example, in the idea of Schrodinger's cat. It's it's the uh, events in, see there's there's the real world that we know, this world, that was explained by Newtonian physics, and then there's the world of potentialities, quantum potentialities. And we, uh, there has to be a crossover from a quantum potentiality to an event in the real world. And you don't know uh, with this 50-50 chance, which which potentiality is going to occur, and that's the problem of the Schrodinger's cat: is that the, when you open the box, the cat might be alive or dead, uh, and but you can't know because if you open the box, then it ruins the experiment. I have placed my bet on red. The dish-like device is spinning, my palms are sweating, my pulse is racing, the small metallic orb goes round and round, is deflected and collides into several ridges. 
If the silver ball tumbles down into the slot of a red number, I will taste the rush of triumph and of easy street, otherwise the bitterness of destruction and of hard knocks. The tiny sphere bounces back up from the first pocket with which it flirts and lands disadvantageously. A small piece of my hide is ripped away from me. The two results, winning and losing, and the differing circumstances which they respectively bring about, are seemingly divided and dissociated one from another. But this is only an appearance. There is a certain system, a level of shared reality, to which both winning and losing belong. It is a dimension which illuminates what they have in common and which precedes either of them and makes them both possible. It is a system of participation. Call it obsessional neurosis or addiction. Call it the game of seductive play to which I assent. I consent to having my mood, my emotional or psychological state suddenly affected by an arbitrary change in fortune or in exterior events. There are other intimate couplings analogous to the pairing between gain and loss, pleasure and pain, love and hate, sado and maso, yin and yang. A gambler who begins to comprehend the intricate intermingling between winning and losing might strive to achieve sovereign indifference towards the value of money, to espy the secret flow of the game itself. And if one were to think in this way about the game of life, one might become enlightened or risk being swallowed up by the consequences of his fluctuations and losses. So gambling is the way to solve these impossible dilemmas of quantum physics. Like winning and losing, the two key ideas of the situationists an avant-garde artistic and radical leftist political movement which thrived in Paris, London, and Northern California in the 50s through the 70s are like a perpetual Mobius strip with appears at, at all points to have two sides but really has one. The two crucial situationist ideas, wandering and the spectacle, should be combined together along with the idea of the diversion of technology. Uh, the early situationists of the 1950s were influenced by Dada, Surrealism, and Lettrism. And with the utopian theories of city planners, Constant Nuenhuz and the Algerian Abdel Hafid Khatib. Uh, so Franco, you knew Constant Nuenhuz personally. Do you want to tell us? Voi raccontare qualcosa su lui, perché l'hai conosciuto personalmente. C'è un microfono là. Qui, qui c'è un microfono. Non mi aspettavo di essere chiamato, non mi aspettavo di essere chiamato, per aiutare i miei amici e i miei amici. E sono le persone che capiscono l'italiano qui, o l'inglese, o l'italiano, o qualcuno che capisce l'italiano? Parlo in inglese? Parlo in inglese? So you knew personally Con Constant? Yes, I did, yeah. Who, who created a utopian city called the New Babylon? Well, I, I have to say that uh, um, I, I know um, reasonably well the, uh, let, me, let, let me use the, the word eclectic way of approaching uh, main lines of uh, Alan and uh, well is uh, I try to resume uh, I'm, I'm, uh, how much time you have 10 minutes or 50 minutes 
Yeah, because they also question maybe. Well, um, what Helen uh, normally emphasizes his writings is the uh, well. There are two or three main main issues. Uh, there are many more than that, but let, let's say two or three. One is that the quantum visions. So quantum bit, whatever, quantum computing. So it, it, it wants to be, as an engineer, to come out from the binary vision. Um, I don't think we have time to talk about philosophy. We have discussed two hours in a bar before. Uh, we, and uh, well, uh, having said that on quantum physics, he says uh, philosophy, at least in Europe or in, in West, is finished. What is not necessarily so, but anyway, is what he says. And he is very interested in what is transdisciplinary. I put a question to him, what is obsolete in a pattern of transdisciplinarity? Uh, but this is, again, maybe for next conference. <laughs> um, what I would like to know from uh, Alan, and maybe from you, if you have the time, I think we can have the time for 10 minutes more, uh, is uh, having said all what is uh, the wandering la dérive situationist or whatever, uh, we have time enough at our back to understand also the limits of it. It is true that I happened to arrive from a scientific study when I was old, as it can be old at 25 years, 40 years ago, in Holland, maybe, <laughs> and to work with uh, I, I didn't know at all what art was, except music, because it was playing piano. But having said that, I didn't know there was something in art languages, art practice, that was really involved with how to construct a city, how to have a relationship with technology, sciences, and whatever. I happened to meet via my wife, uh, family of one of the major figures, in my opinion, of uh, post-situationists, that was Costa and uh, What It was interesting to me from Costa, that we were very close friends for years. He introduced me in, let's say, art patterns or whatever, is the idea of how to uh, project a town. This is another big city. Uh, to me, I understand that we are talking about open city. Open is open, of course. Um, to me, what it was from this uh, town of New Babylon, which was based on the nomadic people going around, but was based on the Homo Ludens concept. Uh, in Homo Ludens concept, it's also a rhetoric, if you want to say. It was based on the philosophy of Helsinger, of course. and. Uh, uh, we, it was a, 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 something that we, we couldn't, let's say, deal with without making a very long discussion of what philosophy of the 50 was. But uh, uh, what I, I would, uh, and then I stop, I, I give the, again the, the phone, to, the microphone to Alan, is that uh, personally I see also the limit of the concept of the digital city or digital whatever. I think, of course it is, of course it is. But we are not 30 years ago in the new, new media of 40 maybe. Um, new media, let's say, um, blow up. I think that it's much more interesting uh, to talk about the hybrid city. The hybrid city is nothing new in hybrid city. <laughs> it's an old story going on. Uh, but it, it, the hybrid city, I think is interesting if you consider that it is populated by hybrid peoples. We are hybrid creators. We have become more and more hybrid. This is what the technology, as my friend Lorenzo Tayuti, Professor Tayuti, said many times, uh, we have social and whatever induced changing by technologies. So. Uh, the question is, of art, of arts with plural, can change, can change our way to live and to project or to program the city. 
socially, why not? And with the last revolution in technology, which is the technology of the living, how this make us more able than ever. Of course, there are shadows in all these kind of things. But we are, uh, it's not enough to say, we, what can we do in open city? Or how can we walk in open city? The thing is, how we can program the relation. The city is a, I know it's a bit far east concept. You can consider the city, whatever the city is, as a living organism. And what is important in the city, whatever your languages are, conventionally arts or not, is the relations among all the creatures, not only the humans. We have, I, I try to take one, uh, the, just to finish with constant with housing. Uh, constant, Oisinger in Italiano. Eh? Uh, one is the revolution of the Homo Ludens, which never happened, but it is related with open whatever. The original title was the obstant for the Homo Ludens. Obstant is also the taking of consciousness. Uh, so, what about to leave? How can we change a bit the relationship in the, in the city now? Smart city, somebody has told before, smart is not enough. Of course there are smart technologies, but to me smart city is, is very, is, is, I don't know, is like a galaxy without a focus. Huh? Okay, I'll, I'll read some, uh, some more about the idea of the new Babylon of Constant uh, and then get into the ideas about uh, the information everywhere in the, in the city of the future uh, and then c continuing the situationist ideas in the context of new technologies. New Babylon was the utopian vision conceived in 1956 by the Dutch artist Constant Nuenhees and eagerly adopted by the provosts in Amsterdam as their own. Constant is generally referred to by his first name. His utopia was imagined for a population that would come into being 50 or 100 years in the future. Its citizens would pass their time in a perpetual anti-tourism, living in hotel-like accommodations, clustered so many miles across the face of the earth on platforms 25 to 50 hectares raised 16 meters above the ground. The rest of the earth's surface would be given over to agriculture, nature preserves, and historic buildings and monuments. His utopia furnished the Dutch provosts with the battle cry, New Babylon, which they used in their ecological plans to campaign for a better and more livable Amsterdam and a better quality of life. It gave them a model that contrasted sharply with the capitalist system and furnish them with a radical socio-economic critique of society on a utopian plane. It was a cybernetic paradise in which total automation of the means of production would bring about total welfare and a socialist anarchist state without authorities. People would be freed from work because labor would be done by computers and robots. Living time would replace work time, and free time and creativity would be optimally developed. Humankind would be delivered from the drudgery of work because homo ludens man the player, according to the concept of the Dutch historian Johan Huizinga. Uh, now considering the contemporary update 
of situationist ideas by Therese Tierney in the field of architecture, information, and the future city. Envisioning the, in envisioning the future city, Tierney focuses on the role of information technology as well as art and architecture. The increasing ubiquity of digital technology, internet services, and location-aware applications in our everyday experience allows for a seamless transitioning between the visible and the invisible infrastructure of cities, transportation systems, building complexes, information and communication technology, and social networks contributing to an interactive and responsive environment. These invisible networks will transform the way we conceptualize cities. What is coming at a street corner near you is the smart city and intelligent infrastructure, responsive architecture, and performance-based generative design. Network structures have fast become the organizational model of cultural and technological production in the internet age, evidenced most obviously by mobile telecommunications and social software. The accelerated climate of connection has become so pervasive that it is no longer a novelty to expect constantly accessible information from multiple sources and to consider ourselves perpetually linked with specialized interest communities and environments. This is influenced by the sociologist Manuel Castells, The Rise of the Network Society. How can we situate the designer within a network society? What is the position and responsibility of the designer as agent within the socially based information society? So we have, the, uh, we have the information infrastructure to have the end of division between a physical and a virtual space, and now it becomes the task of designers to figure out what are we going to do with this information everywhere. Uh, our primary ambition is to explore what this new connected environment really means in human terms. In other words, the notion of a technically enabled humanism. Oh, yeah, five minutes. Okay, cinque okay. minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'll just finish with this. The intersection of design, social space, and networked media provide the basis for increasing and changing the nature of our sociability on all scales, creating new opportunities for collaborative practice and a new field of collective media artifacts. Internet and new media art, which afford alternate means of expression within new media cultural production, as well as advancing open soft source software and creative practices. <clears throat> so I think my attitude towards social media is to not be critical of them, but to see them as a step towards something better, the next step. Uh, so it's not about being uh, wanting to participate in Facebook or being critical of Facebook. It's about seeing it as a temporary step towards something else where the, uh, the space of the virtual, the virtual identity of the person emerges into the real space. So we can have hybrid, virtual, real environments. And also my position with respect to the open source software is also ambivalent. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not involved in the open source movement, but I'm not critical of it. I see it as a step towards something better 
where we have to consider that programmers uh, should, in my opinion, keep some of their code private because we have to reflect on how artists can make money and empower themselves. So I think part of open source is good and part of it is continuing the uh, old-fashioned attitude of artists that don't want to be involved with a so-called commercialization of their activity. I want to also mention Josef Boys, who I think was an artist who had this idea that everyone is an artist and that the valuation of human activity by money should be expanded to include more creativity. Uh, architectural theory and production, which is increasingly equipped to deal with the complexities of contemporary networked space, developing new forms of practice and exploring new levels of complex spatial conditions and context within computational and actual environments. So the next step is the coming together of architecture and informatics so that we go beyond the split between real and virtual, between the computational space and the architectural space. Science can tap the positive potential of a broader connected ecology finding new inspiration from complex biological systems uh, to mold new relations between design and science. The conceptualization of urbanism should be multi-layered, uh, considering distributed networks and systems responsive to the also another hybrid of global and local uh, conditions. Uh, okay. Okay. Are there questions? I got one. Yeah. Uh, hi. Just a very, no, no, just a very small question that I repeat myself very often, very often, so maybe you have an answer. Uh, when you speak about the seamless transition between uh, virtual and physical world, I think it's always uh, been there in, the, in this way. If you think a cathedral was virtual religion and physical market or whatever. The, the, the point where I'm really afraid is that uh, who is the owner of this space? Because this will mean uh, who is the future of this space or the possibility to do something inside. Um, a social network usually is an open space, but it's not a public space. So my, my question is, what do you think about it? It's possible to do something in an open space, which is not exactly a public space, like a, a seamless social life uh, in the city. Thank you. Uh, I think that's a very good question and, and uh, the concept of open, which is what this whole, uh, I guess, sharing and open, that should be the basis of an important sociological work because I think that the ideas of public and private which belong to sociology traditionally and to liberal political th theory, it's obsolete. Uh, we can't, I, I don't think that there is any more a public or a private. Like when you, when I'm working on my computer, I'm not really alone because, for example, if I use Skype, uh, and then I see everyone who, 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 I'm, who is my, all of my dialogue partners, the people I communicate with on Skype, I see these little messages when they com come online and offline. So 
there's no more private uh, anymore with with what the way that we have made computers into social uh, you know I even think the idea of social is obsolete so th this is a very big problem is that we don't have the concepts from sociology to describe this new kind of spaces and I think you know the word open maybe is a good start uh, to get pat we shouldn't use the word public anymore because I don't think that there is a public uh, and there might be like as Bruce said you know there might be like a a simulation of the public or a spectacle of the public, a tourism of the public. I don't think it exists anymore, but it's, it's very difficult to say anything because you have to have, in my view, like a hybrid attitude towards anything. Like you have to be happy that Obama won won the election, but at the same time you know that the election is not really democratic and it's a kind of fake democracy. So I think any attempt to define what this interface between real and virtual is, it will, it will be very difficult. I don't think that we understand what is real, what is virtual. Well, this, is a, this is a very old uh, dilemma. Eh? <laughs> we talk about it from... I think it's also, in, in, let's say, interrelated, that it's very difficult to, to put. Well, another question is, uh, uh, maybe you can, you can have something like a theoretical uh, image of the borders of the public. I can't imagine where are the borders of the open are. How can the open have borders? So that's, that's the... And when we talk about city open something, we, we, we can think to, to Torino as Bruce did, but we can think to towns in China, which are four times bigger. So well, the centrum is completely different. So we have... Uh, uh, just to come back to, to a very interesting example of my life, because I met him very young, but we were very young. It was Rem Kolas. And Rem Kolas was, uh, made a book that he lived in New York in the 70s, a long time ago, saying we, you need a concentration of something, cluster, to be modern, to be something which is very exciting, with, where things happen. Now he has very, very seriously changed of mind. So when he sees what he has, for instance, in Singapore, something similar to New York, say this is not again, this is not anymore where things concentrate. Maybe something like this, a very wide urbanistic space is the space where you can concentrate more to something. But you have also example, but it doesn't work. If you go to Paris and you go in the, in the Balieu de Paris, you have big towns, new big towns, or relatively new, where you have never been able to make something like a centrum where people meet. They say they don't meet only in the, anymore in the Milano Piazza del Duomo, but they don't meet also in, in the cities in, near Paris, where they meet very big theaters, just to come to dance. Very big theaters, always empty. You know, because people go to the same. Well, having said that, uh, the one thing you, you told, in my opinion, which was very interesting, but we don't have the time to deep it now, and you talk about complexity systems. You just get one word about it. I think that this kind of problems, you can only approach with the technology of the complexity systems, no other ones. Questions? Um, I want to form my question around a very, very little example that appeared in uh, your speech and in also in, uh, the, in his speech, which is the dérivé. Um, 
I know in, um, in the recent years by media artists, this uh, idea of the derivé has been uh, picked up a lot, uh, and especially now that you have a GPS integrated in mobile phones, so you, you try to revive the wandering through the city with your mobile phone. You, uh, you can get suggestions on your mobile phone uh, to go to another route, um, and uh, maybe on this other route you get um, suggestions for uh, new information uh, about the space that you encounter. And uh, my question is, uh, is it also only a transient development and what is the next step? Like, um, what did we gain from the additional hybridity in this performance? Um, using now the additional tool of technology. Um, did we gain something because we can catch the attention of young kids who love the new gadget um, to participate? Did we gain more information through um, like, uh, yeah, like a layer of uh, hidden infos we get about the spaces that we see? Um, and. Um, and another aspect is that what if um, we are now in a, in a time where we have to rethink our budget, where we have to re rethink expenses, um, like um, are these hybrid spaces based on a wealthy society that can afford technology and maybe some they we discovered that you know the original derivé with um, out the mobile phone that has additional costs to our just shoes we need for walking like uh, maybe the experience without the technology was uh, the same rich as uh, as the second one which had this uh, hybrid edition of the technology uh. <coughs> The, the wandering through the city is, is le détournement and the uh, deviation of technology is le dérive. But I think you brought both of them together, the wandering and the uh, using the technologies in, in alternate ways. Uh, for me, it's about, I think most people use the digital technologies for, for a specific purpose, for a very functional reason, like the GPS system on the cell phone or Google Maps, they use to find information about the city when they're, or to, when they're navigating in their car. And in my opinion, this is good, but it's also da dangerous because the more we have information systems about reality, it's not, you know, we, we, people tend to think of technology, uh, technologies of representation and media as like a tra transparent window that they're only giving us information about reality. But we have to see they are actively affecting reality. So if we have a perfect information about the city, we are also destroying the, the mysteries and the magic and the excitement of the city. So to me, the, the goal of a more artistic use of these digital technologies would be to bring awareness to the problem of how these technologies are dangerous for our for the ri the richness of life experience of the city we need to to change technologies of information about the city so that they add to the complexity in a good sense, the richness 
and the quality of experience which includes secrets and mysteries and enchantment and surprises. So far, we're using uh, GPS and Google Map as a kind of disenchantment of, of the city so that we can save time and save money and, ne and never get lost. Same. Okay, we have to stop. But uh, one of the lessons that he wanted to tell us, I think, if you, are, if you agree with what I am saying, I'm quoting you, by the way. <laughs> uh, Alan says once a very good sentence for me. and said, we, we think we have a computer science. We don't. We have a computer engineering. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to go out. Otherwise, we stay with all the animals. <laughs> all the, all the, and it's done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, John.